Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool. Welcome to my subscriber request series Tuesday. I, every Tuesday, I do an article where I cover stocks that subscribers requested that I cover. So these aren't my choices. These are your choices. These are stocks that y'all have an interest in. And this particular video is going to be I'm going to cover several casino and gaming stocks. And they were not all asked at the same time, but I thought it would be efficient for me to cover all of them. There's some very fascinating things you're going to see when I cover these stocks. You know, I often talk about it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. And what that really means is that stocks are different. They come in all different sizes, shapes, and flavors. Some are income producers, some are growth stocks, some are speculation, some are big, some are small, some are cyclical. There's just all kinds of different kinds of stocks out there. What's very interesting, at least I found, because I haven't really ever looked at these casino and gaming stocks too much in the past, is how consistently they all look very, very similar in terms of what their historical operating results were. Have been. I found that very fascinating. I'm not sure what the reason for that is at this point. That would require further analysis, but it's definitely true that they all have very similar characteristics and traits. So let's go ahead and look at these casino stocks here. And they're all under the GIC sector, General Industry Classification System sector, consumer discretionary. So they are consumer discretionary stocks, number one. They're all called casino and gaming as the GIC sub-industry. And many of these are famous. You know, everyone knows of Caesars and, of course, Las Vegas Sands, MGM Resorts. When some of you might not be familiar with, with Melco Resorts and Entertainment, that's actually an international one. But what I've done is I've put together some, you know, fast graphs on each of these. And I want you to notice some things that I find very, very interesting. So I'm going to start here by looking at Wynn Resorts. Now, what I want you to notice is a very spotty dividend record, number one. That's something that I personally don't like very much. In other words, this white line is the dividend, and you can see they've eliminated the dividend during the Great Recession of 2008. If I back this up as far as I can go, you'll see that you know they had pretty good results. Then the recession came. They got beat up pretty bad. They had several years of bad earnings. They eliminated their dividend. Then they, you know, grew again for a while coming out of the Great Recession. Then they got kind of cyclical. And then, of course, during COVID, you know, they literally shut their doors. They slashed their dividend and, you know, eliminated that. So I'm going to look at these stocks, most of them, from about a 10 to 15 year time frame here because I, I want to just notice the nature of the beast. So let me go through the others here very quickly and then I'll come back to them. You know, if I move into Las Vegas Sands, look how similar this looks relative to what we just saw. You know, you get the same type of scenario, the elimination of dividends, you get the the very poorness, the cyclical shares, the unpredictability of the dividends. You even had a period of time where the dividend payout ratio got up to 123%. These are very, very inconsistent and very, very volatile stocks. Look, look at the volatility here from a P.E. of 138 and a price of 133 during the Great Recession, all the way down to a price of five dollars and 15 cents. That's I mean, that's about as close to 100 percent loss as you can get. You know, the stock would have lost 96 percent during that time frame, meaning that, you know, these stocks aren't really recession resistant, although you might think they would be. Then it grew pretty nicely if you, you know, coming out of the Great Recession for the next three or four years, we had this enormous you know, rise in price. You know, the, the the stock went from an ultimate low of two dollars and twenty eight cents all the way up to eighty five dollars. So that's a forty fold increase. So you know, look at the volatility. That's what I want you to see. And then of course the company made no money and completely slashed their dividend during COVID. We're seeing a very similar thing with these Malco Resorts and Entertainment. Now this one, I'm going to go ahead and use our external links to go into the corporate website here and look at the company. Malco is actually a company that operates internationally. You know, you can see they have, you know, properties, I guess you would say, in Manila. They have properties in Macau. They have properties, where's Morphus? And I'm not sure where this is, but again, I'm not real familiar with these companies. But the point is, this is a more of an international casino where the other three are, you know, well known for what they do in the, in the United States. But anyway, it's a very interesting stock. When you look at it, you get the same type of volatility, the same type of cyclicality, the same type of dividend cuts. And of course, all of them lost money. And the reason I keep bringing this up is 
the stocks have rallied, you know, on the idea that COVID is going to end. And, and, you know, but we're still not looking at any earnings for 2021. And there were certainly no earnings in 2020. So we're, we're looking at stocks here that have a potential, you know, recovery, you know, out in 2022 or so. But the reality of it is, there's nothing supporting them from a valuation point of view, any of these companies currently. If I look at Caesars, we see the same thing. Now we see this enormous rally. You know, this is a sentiment rally here. There's no, no reason why I see, and by looking at this graph for Caesars stock price, to have risen, you know, in the last several months, to have risen, you know, by this astronomical amount. You know, it went from a, a low price of $14.40 up to $90 a share, and that's in virtually one year's time. So, you know, this is why I refer to these really as speculations. They're more speculative than they are investable, in my opinion. And the other side is MGM is like, you know, the late great Yogi Berra would say, deja vu all over again, had almost the same results. The company slashed the dividend, didn't eliminate it, interestingly. I'm not sure why. But again, you just don't see a whole lot of performance here. You get decent long-term performance when you, you know, measure it from this point to this point. But look at all the volatility in between. So these casino companies are something that's not for the faint of heart. Now, these are, you know, these are great businesses. You know, they have great properties. You know, the MGM resorts are, you know, obviously, you know, well-known. They have 30 properties worldwide, 100-plus entertainment offerings. And then they have one United Entertainment and Hospitality Company, which I'm not even sure what that is, but they cater to a lot of different people. Some of these casinos are just really breathtaking when you, you know, when you see the properties that they have, the, the sands. Now, interestingly, the Las Vegas Sands property reached an agreement to sell their Las Vegas properties for six and a quarter billion. I don't know if they're going to change their name or what's going to happen, but, you know, it's it's obviously a very famous one. And then, of course, you have Caesars, if I can find it here. Yeah, you have Caesars Entertainment. You know, this is, I think, where you have the, you know, the famous chefs. And then you have the Penn & Teller show, apparently, I guess, is in Caesars. This is a very, you know, famous and popular Las Vegas property. But, but the bottom line is these companies are very, very cyclical. Now, I do want to look at these companies from another perspective. I want you to look at price to sales here on these stocks. Their sales have been cyclical as well, but their sales growth has been strong. Notice the high price to sales, for example, that Wind Resorts is trading at. Let's look at price to sales of Las Vegas Sands, which, you know, has been kind of flat for the last several years here. But nevertheless, the stock price has risen dramatically, trading at a significant premium to its typical price to sales ratio that you would, you know, normally expect. If I look at Melcor Resorts, we see a similar thing. It's trading at a at five times sales. It typically trades at about one to two times sales. So you're seeing excessive valuations here, and I don't really see a whole lot of reasons why we've got these extremely high valuations going on with these stocks, because they're they're not making any money. Everybody's looking, I guess, at the future and hoping that these companies turn around. You know, MGM is trading at a very high price to sales, which has been disastrous in the past. So these companies are not for the faint of heart. They're casino companies. They're very interesting. Another metric that I think you can look at these companies with that is kind of interesting, you know, is, is if you look at it from a standpoint of operating cash flows, you see a little better correlation between price and operating cash. I'm looking at Wynn Resorts here. You can see the price has followed the cash flows. I guess cash flows is what these are all about. But if the house always wins, I'm really not sure why the companies are as cyclical and erratic as they can. But if I was looking at any of these stocks, I would pay very close attention to price to cash flow because I, as I kind of went through these for the first time, and again, these aren't stocks that I've personally invested in and personally have followed or personally researched deeply. But I do see that there's a lot of correlation between price and cash flow. So I would definitely, if you're going to research these further, look at cash flow. But the bottom line is, I believe the horse is already out of the barn. If you look at most of the stocks here that I showed you here, like, you know, Caesars is a classic example. Even when I look at it with operating cash flow, clearly from a standpoint of price to operating earnings, 
the stock has gotten way, way ahead of itself. Now, the cash flows are expected to increase dramatically. I'm not sure why that would be something interesting to look at. So this would be one that would look like it might be some value if you're looking at priced operating cash flows. But the reality of it is, you know, these stocks do tend to trade on their cash flows a lot more consistent than they do operating earnings. I've got rid of some of that anomalous data here, and you can see that they're very cash flow sensitive. Anyway, these are the gaming companies. They obviously all suffered as a result of COVID. You know, they weren't able to really generate any profitability during that time frame. You know, literally had to, you know, most of them probably closed their doors, et cetera. Again, I'm not an expert in these. I just don't, you know, none of them have great credit ratings. If we look at them from a standpoint of their credit ratings, let's go ahead and add the credit ratings to the tool here. We've only got Las Vegas Sands, which is triple B minus, which I would consider investment grade. Anything below that, I don't consider investment grade. Caesars has no credit rating, which could also mean they simply didn't apply for one. Melco has no credit rating. Wynn is double B minus and MGM is B plus. So, you know, these are companies with a lot of debt. They all have, you know, debt in excess of 75% debt to capital, which I don't find that surprising. But the bottom line is these aren't really what I call buy and hold long term you know, invest in and hold them for the long-term investments. These need to be traded. You need to be very uh, attuned to what's happening in the industry. The, the volatility here is just extraordinary on every one of these companies. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a subscriber request. Uh, these are not stocks that I personally have would have chosen to video about. But anyway, they're what you wanted to know. You asked, so I gave it to you. If you like this video, give me a like, you know, thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel, do all those wonderful things. I appreciate you as always. Thanks for watching.